Today on Beers TV Refacts, we answer how do I set up a calcium reactor to replace two part additives? Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of Beers TV Refacts. It's all about those quick, straight to the point answers to those questions reefers ask all the time. This time, it's how do I set up or tune a calcium reactor to replace two part? In this case, the answer is easy, and it's Jay Deke's calcium reactor setup calculator with a specific focus on step one labeled replace a supplement. There are options for a variety of two parts and even Kelkwasser. Just enter a handful of fields and it'll spit out your settings or adjustments to quickly tune the reactor to your needs. He's created an awesome tool and even though it looks like it's been around since 2004 or over a decade, I don't think it's as widely used or understood as it could be. Today we make it easy so anyone can use it easily to tune the reactor to nearly the exact same calcium alkaline solution as their two part addition. Today's fact assumes that you set up a reactor per the instructions that came with it, which is the starting point. To be safe, this is typically lower than you would normally run it, and then you tune it up to your needs. The tuning, or dialing it into your needs, is where the calcium reactor calculator comes in. Step one, enter the size of your system, water volume, typically that's in gallons. This is your tank plus sump minus rock and sand. It doesn't need to be perfect, so just get close. Don't get too hung up on this step. In our case, we're gonna select a 100 gallon tank. Step two is select the additive that you're using currently. There are a handful of dry additives, two-part additives, and even saturated Kelkwasser. Just as a reference point, the option labeled Randy's Recipe 1 Alkalinity is basically the same concentration as BRS two-part, and a pretty disproportionate amount of people watching this video are going to be using. In our case, we are using BRS two-part, so we'll select Randy's Recipe 1 Alkalinity. Under that, enter how much of that you add on a daily basis. In our case, I'm going to assume this is an SPS tank with a fairly heavy demand and a daily BRS two-part alkalinity dose of 100 milliliters. Step three is enter the affluent alkalinity of your calcium reactor after the initial setup based on the reactor's instructions. The affluent is the solution leaving the reactor and being dosed to the tank. We measure the alkalinity of the affluent, we're essentially measuring the strength of that solution. This can be done with almost any test kit and the range will likely be between 15 and 40 dkh or so depending on your setup. In many cases you may need to dilute the sample for your test kit to read this high. For example, a HANA dkh checker reads between 0 and 20 dkh, so if your reactor's affluent is higher than 20, in this case it would be wise to dilute the sample. The HANA checker requires a 10 milliliter sample, so you may choose to dilute the 5 milliliters of affluent sample with 5 milliliters of RODI water and then double the result or even 2.5 milliliters of affluent sample and 7.5 milliliters of RODI water and then multiply the result from the checker by four. Same type of thing can be done with almost any test kit as well and still be able to achieve acceptable accuracy. In this case, I'm gonna assume that the reactor is set up for a moderate range and operating at an internal pH of around 6.8 and the reactor may be producing an affluent DKH of around 20. So I'm gonna enter 20 here and it's super important to make sure to select DKH or whatever measurement that you're using from the alkalinity dropdown. Step four, enter the affluent flow rate, which is often between 20 and 120 milliliters a minute, but can be more in some super high demand or extremely large tanks. There's a variety of ways to get that number. The Vertex reactor has a flow meter right on it. If you're using a continuous duty dosing pump like the Kimor FX STP, the flow rate is on the display. Otherwise, just use a milliliter measuring cup and time how much you collect in a minute. In our case, I'm gonna enter 20 milliliters a minute, which is on the low end and a decent starting point for many reefers who are new to setting up a reactor. Again, make sure it says milliliters a minute or whatever flow rate measurement that you're using. Step five, enter the alkalinity of the tank. In this case, I'm gonna enter 8.5 dKH because that's what we run a lot of tanks at here. Again, super important that you switch the measurement to the alkalinity measurement that you use. In our case, we use dKH, then hit calculate. This is the super cool part. It spits out very precise recommendations based on your two-part dose. First, it tells you that your tank and cores are consuming 1.4 dKH a day, and that's what you need to replace with a calcium reactor, which is nice to know. Second, it gives you two options to achieve that. First, assumes that you're going to maintain the strength of the calcium reactor's affluent at whatever it is, in our case, 20 dKH. So with our example tank, it's telling us to replace the 1.4 dKH daily. We actually have to dose 31.9 milliliters a minute rather than the 20 milliliters a minute. So the only thing I really need to do is adjust the needle valve, or even better, dosing pump to 32 milliliters a minute, and I should have nearly perfectly matched what I was doing with my two part previously. The second option is rather than adjust the flow, keep it at 20 milliliters a minute and increase the potency of the affluent. 
In this case, it says increase it from 20 dKH that we had to 26.8 dKH, which is often going to be achieved by lowering the pH within the reactor, probably by a couple to a few tenths of a point to 6.6. .6. Which of these options you'll choose will depend on your reactor setup. If you have a continuous duty dosing pump or flow meter, it's probably going to be easiest just to adjust the flow rate. If you don't have either of those, but do have a pH controller on the reactor, changing the pH within the reactor might be easier. In the end, right below that, they show a variety of setups which will achieve the same desired result, match your tank's needs from an affluent concentration of 15 dKH at 56 milliliters a minute to 30 dKH at 17 milliliters a minute. I would note that drastically increasing or decreasing the flow rate might have some effect on the concentration or strength of the affluent. That depends on how you set up your reactor, the size of your reactor, and how much water and media the reactor holds, and adjusting the flow rate might have very little to no effect. But in the next episode, we're gonna to get to the heart of that with the next piece of the calcium reactor by adjusting or tuning your reactor. I'd also be on the lookout for Randy's Beers TV Investigates where he digs in and provides all kinds of direct information on what happens when you change the pH or flow rate within the reactor. You might be surprised how straightforward this is. Hopefully that shed some light on how to use a few minute tool to set up your calcium reactor to match the two part dose you are using. If you have other questions, shoot the BRS team a quick email, chat or call, even better. Check out the links below to the Reef to Reef and BRS's Ask BRS TV Facebook group for community threads specific to today's exact conversation. Interested in some free reefing gear every Monday in our live, Randy and I refund some preferred reefers last orders, but also just what's in your cart so you don't even have to buy to win. There's just one of the preferred reefer perks. Check out the link down below. As always, if you find what we do here helpful, let us know with a quick thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be instantly notified when we release new reefing videos like this one. See you at the next episode of BRS TV.